All right, today we'll be reading pages 44 and 45 of the A Child's Introduction to African American History. We'll be giving ourselves a total of 10 minutes to read with speed and accuracy or fluency. The Southern Christian Leadership Conference. In 1957, some of the leaders of the Montgomery Boycott gathered to create a new organization. They called it the Southern Christian Leadership Conference or SCLC. Reverend King was elected its first president. That same year, Daisy Bates, president of the Arkansas NAACP, led an effort to desegregate schools in Little Rock, Arkansas state capital. In September 1957, six girls and three boys prepared to become the first black Americans to attend Central High School. But Orval Fabus, the governor of Arkansas, was against integration. He surrendered Excuse me, he surrounded the school with 250 National Guardsmen to block the students' arrival on September the 4th. September 4th. An angry mob showed up as well. Fabus defiled the courts for more than two weeks before giving in. He defied the courts for more than two weeks before giving in. On September 23rd, the Little Rock Nine, as the group of black students was called, again tried to enter Central High School. They managed to get in through a side entrance, but a crowd of 1,000 white Arkansas or Arkansans soon formed outside. The black students were escorted home for their safety. Whew. They were unable to return to school until President Dwight D. Eisenhower sent more than 1,000 federal troops to Arkansas to protect them. The Greensboro Four. On February 1, 1960, four black college students in Greensboro, North Carolina, sat at a Woolworths lunch counter that was reserved for whites only. Joseph, Joseph McNeil, Franklin McCain, Ezell Blair Jr. and David Richmond sat there all day, despite being refused service. They returned the next day, joined by 20 more students. Their protests continued, and by the fourth day, more than 300 students showed up. The protest led by the Greensboro Four, known as a sit-in, was not the first of its kind, but it was among the most influential. The sit-in... Movement spread throughout the South with students and other activists claiming seats at segregated lunch counters. Meanwhile, the Greensboro Woolworths suffered a decline in sales because of all the negative attention the sit-ins received. On July 25, 1960, Black people were served at its lunch counter for the first time. Freedom Rides. Other forms of protest against racial inequality took place in public institutions and facilities, such as libraries, swimming pools, and beaches. Activists from the Congress of Racial Inequality, C-O-R-E, and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, S-N-C-C, began riding interstate buses in the South to challenge segregated seating. Inspired by an earlier campaign in 1947, 13 riders left Washington, D.C. On May 4, 1961, via Greyhound, the Trailways buses, they headed to New Orleans with stops in many Southern states along the way. 10 days after they left Washington, the rioters were attacked by a mob in Anniston, Alabama. Rioters tossed homemade bombs into one of the buses and beat the activists when they fled. The rioters were met with similar violence in Birmingham and Montgomery. Additional members from Corps and SNCC arrived to replace rioters who had been arrested or were too injured to continue. The campaign expanded into a series of rides that continued until November the 1st. When the, 
when the Interstate Commerce Commission issued a new rule allowing passengers to sit wherever they wanted to on buses and trains. Letter from Birmingham Jail. During the ongoing nonviolent protest campaign in Birmingham, Reverend King and several other civil rights leaders were arrested and imprisoned. While in jail in April 1963, King wrote a famous letter in which he responded to critics who said African Americans needed to be more patient in their quest for equality. He argued that African Americans had waited long enough. He also defended the practice of civil disobedience, a type of nonviolent peaceful protest in which citizens knowingly break the law because they believe it is unjust. Without sit-ins and marches, he wrote, those who oppose civil rights for blacks would continue to prevent them from enjoying full equality. King wrote the letter in the margins of a newspaper and on scraps of paper smuggled out of the jail by his lawyers. Once it was complete, the letter was published in several magazines. It includes some of King's best known quotations, such as injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. The Children's Crusade. While Reverend King was in jail, one of his assistants organized a campaign involving the black children of Birmingham on May 3rd, 1963, Reverend James Bevel of SCLC convinced more than 1,500 children to skip school and engage in peaceful protests. They left a meeting at 16th Street Baptist Church and entered Kelly Ingram Park. Minutes later, police turned on them with fire hoses and police dogs. Television images and newspaper photos of the attack on the children convinced many Americans to support the cause of civil rights. The Battle of Ingram Park was a significant turning point in the struggle for justice and equality. Um, excuse me, for justice and equal opportunity. All right, we did it, we did it, we did it. So if you notice, I paused a long time at one point during the reading, but we are under eight minutes and I did make a couple mistakes. So I'm letting you know it's okay. This public, this video is going to be public, but I am not ashamed because I want to be an example to you that if you read well or you don't read well, you can still read, keep trying. Practic practice makes perfect. And sometimes reading publicly, you may not read as well as you do privately. So there are a lot of different reasons why some people perform better in private than they do in public. Some people perform better in public than they do in private. And people are different, but that's okay. Keep trying, okay? So look forward to the next reading from this book, A Child's Introduction to African American History. And by no means is it only for children. It is very updated. And so I hope that you will continue to listen. And I hope that maybe if you have access to a library that you will go to the library and get the book for yourself and follow along or just follow along with the videos. So the next reading will be pages 46 and 47. Thank you for reading along with me or listening and have a, have a good night or have a good day, whichever, where, wherever you are, whatever time it is, have a good evening. <laughs>